Hello, Bethany. It's Monday devotion, but it's actually Sunday night, and I'm out here at my campfire in my garden with Bilbo, my dog, and I was sitting here thinking about one of my favorite Bible stories, and it's in Genesis. It's the story of Jacob. Now, Jacob was quite a trickster. He tricks his brother out of his inheritance and has to run away, so he runs away to his mother's house, mother's family's house, her, her brother Laban's house, and falls in love with Rachel, who's just stunningly beautiful. And he wants to marry Rachel. Well, Laban tricks him, and he ends up marrying Leah, the oldest daughter. Finally, after seven years, he's able to marry Rachel. And then it goes on and on and on until finally he's got 11 boys, and he wants to leave. So after being tricked by Laban for years, he finally tricks Laban, and he's able to take all of his sheep and goats. And so he's leaving, and he's getting back towards Esau. Now, he's a little worried as he comes towards Esau's land, because he ripped Esau off. He got his promise. He got his inheritance. You know, he's got everything, and Esau was left holding the bag. And so, last time Esau saw him, he was going to kill him. Now, that was like 20, 30 years ago, but, you know, anger stays. And so, Jacob does the brave thing. He takes all of his servants and his, what would be soldiers, and puts them in the front. And then he takes his, his uh, handmaids, who are his wife's also, his wife's handmaids, who he also married, and, and puts them in their children, and then he puts Leah and her children, and then he puts Rachel and her child, and then he crosses the river, and he's on the other side of the river. He's basically hiding. And in the middle of the night, he ends up in a wrestling match. And somehow, it's a wrestling match with God. And somehow, he gets God in such a way that God won't get escape. He puts him in a hold, and, and God injures Jacob's thigh, and it's just a, a big wrestling match throughout the night. And finally, God says, I have to go, and Jacob says, give me a blessing. And so he says, I give you this blessing. Your name is now Israel, one who wrestles with God and survives. Or one who wrestles with God and overcomes. Well, in the morning, Jacob goes in front of everybody else and meets his brother Esau, who actually greets him with a hug, not in anger, but to see his long-lost brother. But what I'm talking, thinking about is the wrestling with God. There's a lot of times I find myself wrestling with God. Maybe I've lost someone, someone died who I, who I really loved and cared for. And I wonder why, why, why did this happen? Or maybe, maybe I know someone who's been sick and they're just suffering and suffering and they're, and they're not dying and, and it's just so much pain and so much suffering. It's like, why God? And I look around the world with all the, all the racial strife and, you know, people who aren't given justice, people who aren't given the normal rights that I have. I mean, people who'd be afraid to sit out at night like this because they might be stopped or questioned. Where I never worry about that. Or this disease that's out here that we can't see, but everybody says don't worry about it because you can't see it, but just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not there. So I wrestle with God about that. When is this going to end? I wrestle with God about how we care for creation. I wrestle with God about poverty in the world. I wrestle with God about the brokenness in my life, in the church. I find myself wrestling with God a lot. Maybe you do too. You know, wondering why things happen. Maybe you're having problems with your work. Maybe you're having family problems. Maybe someone you love has died or sick. Or maybe things just aren't going well. 
you know, I suffered with depression for, for years. And in a way, that's wrestling with God. You know, I sometimes I just get so down that I don't know why. I know some friends who have taken their lives because that darkness is so great that they can't get out. But then I think about that dark night where Jacob encountered God. Maybe the wrestling was mental, maybe it was physical, maybe it was spiritual, maybe it was all three. But Jacob wrestled with God and survived and overcame. See, that's why it's one of my favorite stories, because you can wrestle with God. You can question God. You can battle with God in your heart. And God still loves you. God still holds you. God still cares for you. You know, I, all my wrestling, I don't always receive answers or... I don't always receive comfort. Sometimes I even feel God may not be there. But I wrestle on. And that's kind of what life is like. Sometimes things are going great and it's wonderful. And sometimes we find ourselves at night wrestling with God. Just like I'm wrestling with Bilbo right now. And the great thing is God can take it. Psalm 22 starts off, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I love on Monday, Thursday, when we're stripping the altar and that psalm was read, because it's such a psalm of pleading and a psalm of abandonment. But in the end, God is there. God is great. God is with us. How majestic is your name in all the earth we heard this morning in Psalm 8. How majestic. I think of Jacob every time he walked with that limp from then on. The rest of his life in the Holy Land and the Promised Land and then in Egypt. That limp reminding him of that night that he wrestled with God and, and survived. And I know in my own wrestlings, I will survive. God will be with me. Well, I hope you enjoyed being around the campfire with me and listening to the chimes on this very beautiful Sunday night. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us as we wrestle with you. Help us to know that no matter what, you love us, you care for us, you bless us. You call us by our name and declare that we are your children. Help us to know in all of our struggles that you are there, that you too have shouted out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That you too have faced suffering and trials so you can stand solidarity with us, with those who are suffering racial prejudice, with those who are suffering sickness from this virus, with those who are suffering loss of job or loss of life or loss of how we live because of what's going on this year. As we wrestle with you, help us to know that you are with us and love us through all of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Monday. I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.